Uh, can you talk about the, just the logic of getting rid of Trey for a fourth round pick? Like, wh why was that a good move for the organization? Um, well, we decided on our two we're going to be that we were going with. Uh, we'll see how our 53 works out to see if we're going to keep three or not. Um, and when we told Trey, um, when we told him that he wasn't the two, I said we'd like to keep him here as the three. Um, but we also want to do what's good for him too. And we'll see how this plays out. Now, when we looked in other teams and he told us that he would like another opportunity to go somewhere where we had a chance to be the two, um, we thought we got some good deals for him. Uh, there was a number of teams involved. To end up getting the fourth was a little better than we anticipated and clears up a lot of money and uh, allows a better situation for him too. Did he request the trade? And was it a situation where it was unrepairable to the point where if he wasn't traded, you would have had to release him? No. No, it was it was never unprepared on what did you just call it? Unrep yeah. We could always fit I mean we were good. Like Trey it actually had a great conversation with them today. Had a tough conversation when I told him he didn't win the second job. Um, today was much easier just going through it for the last couple of days with them. Um, but no, there was nothing to fix. It was it was what it was. And I told him when we told him that he was gonna be the three. If he could find another other opportunity that was good, we'd allow him to do that. And he did. And we feel he'll be better for it and think we will too. Why did you end the quarterback competition after the, before the third preseason? Because I knew it. Um, I thought it would take longer. Um, I wanted to go through this game, um, but I knew it. And I think a lot of guys knew it. And, uh, I think he had an idea. Um, it was more about my relationship with Trey that, you know, I'm in meetings with him every day and stuff. I'm on the field with him every day. And I could get a sense that he was starting to feel that we felt that way. And, and it was the truth. And I don't want to BS him. So once I thought that he, once we knew, and once I could tell he knew that we knew, um, I remember the night before, um, I realized he's you not know, going to come in the morning and tell him. Um, I don't want that between us. So I did. Didn't expect it to get out right away, um, but it did. But that was something I thought I owed to Trey. And I told Trey right before um, a team meeting that we had. Um, and I, didn't get a chance to even tell Sam or anyone else on the team. That was just a personal thing between Trey and I, and it obviously got out, but um, that's why I thought it was important to tell him. We asked you on Wednesday, you didn't tell us. Did you want to tell the players first? How, what was your reasoning? No, my reasoning was, yeah, I would love to tell the players first. I'd love to tell Sam first. Um, we were hoping that Trey was going to come to practice still, and I totally understood why he didn't. Um, he asked if he could have it off because, you know, he, he was a little emotional and stuff, didn't want to be around the players like that, and totally understood that. Um, but we're still hoping he would come. And then by the time he didn't, um, wasn't going to have a meeting on the field to tell the players who he announced as a second string guy. Um, and I had not to mention, practice ended at 1.43. And I had a radio show at 1.45. And so I got on a radio show and I talked about it for 20 minutes there. And that's what I felt good with because I thought if I talked about it there, you guys would get that information. Um, unfortunately, I found out that that radio show was delayed because of a baseball game. They went into extra innings, so you guys didn't find out till 4.30. Um, so if I would have had it over, I would have told you guys right away. But usually when I do a radio show, you guys get that stuff pretty fast. So um, I thought you guys had it. And I realized that you didn't until about 4.30. Uh, when you signed Darnold, did you tell Trey this could be the backup? Uh, was it clear to him? Uh, and if it was, what was his reaction even back then? I told Trey the same thing I told you guys. Um, and Brock since day one. So, I mean, it's been everything we've told you guys, we've told him. Um, we said if Brock was healthy, it was going to be hard for anyone to beat him out um, with what he put on tape last year. Uh, if he's not healthy, um, Sam and Trey were competing for the one spot. If he was, we thought they'd be competing for the two. That's what we said before they got here. That's what they said when they got here, OTAs and training camp. And um, that's the way it worked out. Um, they had OTAs together. They had all these practices. And um, Sam won that competition. Sam show you during the practices and during during camp to make you and, and the staff feel that he was the better choice? Um, just everything, the whole body of work. He got better as it went. Uh, I thought it was tight for a little bit. And just over the last couple of weeks and stuff, started to separate himself each day. And um, just the more comfortable he got, the more consistent he got, I um, think it was pretty apparent for all of us. To clarify, did, did he request a trade? And at which day did that happen? And how was that conveyed to you? Um, when Trey and I talked, we talked about all the situations going forward. And I told him how much I'd still want him here to be the three and things like that. I also told him that what I think is best for Trey, I do think Trey needs an opportunity to play more. 
Um, the opportunities he's had here, when he has had those two opportunities, he's gotten hurt in both of them and kind of missed that window a little bit. Um, gave an opportunity for someone else to do it, and that person did it and stayed healthy for those seven games and showed us something that we're confident in. And Trey kind of needs that again, and he didn't get that here. And so I told him that's what I think is best for him if he can find a good opportunity. Um, if he doesn't and he wants to be here, well, we want him here. And Trey took a little bit of time to think about it, but he came back and said he'd like to find another spot if, it, if we can. And that's when we started looking into it, his agent, us, um, and that came to fruition today. That first conversation was Wednesday and then Thursday, he came back and said, I'd rather find No, the first conversation was Wednesday. About an hour and a half later, he came and told me that he would like that. He'd also like to not have to go out to practice and stuff, just to get his stuff together and think about it. And, um, and that's what he did. And the next day he came in and was at our walkthrough, was at our meetings last night. We didn't know if something would happen today. Him and I were communicating about it yesterday, um, the possibilities of it, told him a possible some teams that were interested. So I was talking about those options last night, what I thought was best, what he did. And then today, some other teams became interested. And um, if they wanted of, um, he would have been out at that game and stuff, and we would have tried to go with him as our three. Um, but some good stuff did come up and some stuff that I think he's really excited about, especially telling him today, I could tell he was, and um, some things we are too. He did give up a lot for him. He's still young. Was this a failure of evaluation, a failure of just circumstance? How would you characterize this move? Um, I mean, obviously, we took our shot, and it didn't work out. So, I mean, that's on us for that. But I'm not going to say anything as in failure. To I mean, that would be too much of a negative towards Trey. I get our deal. We, we took a shot to go for that. We were hoping that he could be our guy, and that didn't work out. So um, I understand that from our standpoint, but I still do believe in Trey. And, you know, about three years ago, you know, we had the 12th pick in the draft, you know, after that COVID year, but we thought we had a really good team. And um, we didn't think we'd have a chance again to get close to that top area to take a quarterback um, in the top 10. And when you have the 12th pick in the draft, we, we went into it realizing it was a risk, but we thought we weren't going to pick that high again for a couple of years. And we would never have a chance to move from 12 to three. Um, we tried to move up to a number of spots before that, but three was um, the first one that would do it. You know, we looked in everything between 12 and three. And we got that and we took our shot, something we believed in and a person we believed in. Um, was hoping he could play more his first year. We knew he wouldn't come in and just take it over from Jimmy, but we were hoping to mix it in and kind of give him some experience. But once he broke the finger and stuff, it, it just got tougher for him as time went. Um, we knew we'd commit to him the next year, which we did. Um, we knew he wasn't fully ready in every aspect, but we knew he had a skill set that we could put some stuff together to give him the chance to compete and grow um, with a good team as he developed as a full quarterback. And he got hurt in the first quarter of the second game, which kind of set that back. And now we're here in the third year and, you know, we still got a good team and we thought it would be Trey. Um, I think we got pretty fortunate falling into still having a rookie quarterback in our third year um, that happened to be the seventh round pick. Um, and we also look back at it is we didn't think with having the 29th pick, which, you know, those two first round picks were ended up being the 29th pick in the draft, in the draft, which we were expecting it to be late. We were hoping it would be 32 or something like that. But we knew we know with two, tw two first round picks that are both at 29, you can never even consider to move up to something like that. And so we had to act then and we did didn't work out, which can be a huge challenge. But um, that's why we feel pretty fortunate what we fell into. Was Trey, was, was Trey able to go over the options with you this morning before you accepted the trade? And then how did you convey that to the team? Um, I just told the team that to just, I told them after the, the deal, just, you know, anytime you trade a quarterback and things like that, I mean, all those guys are going through some similar stuff. I'm going to have a lot of tough conversations with a lot of guys over these next few days. Um, but I always told them the circumstances are different when it's under this magnitude, someone, a quarterback position, someone who was drafted like him. So I just told them that's, that's not a, that's, that's up for John and I to decide. I hope they trust us with what's best for the team, but they just got to be prepared for those questions and stuff, which they're not going to know much about. One, one non-FQB question. What's the, status of, of Jake Moody and, and how long is he going to be out? That's week to week right now. Or we're hoping that he can have a chance for week one. Um, he ended up straining his quad um, last week um, in practice, and we'll see how his body reacts to it. With, with Zane's injury, does 
that mean you have to look at, at other kickers? Uh, we most likely got to, and we definitely got to have a plan B for week one. You know, Zane could have been that, but, I, you know, he's probably not going to be ready for week one, too, looking at what happened to him today. A couple days, Kyle, you did say it, 10 days ago, it kind of when it really clarified. You go back 10 days from that, that was a Raider game. Was that kind of the defining moment for this decision? No, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, I didn't. I just threw out 10 days. Today, I just said the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it's you don't never you never make a decision off one day. You never make it off of one preseason game or anything like that. It's accumulation of work. I thought it was a lot tighter earlier on in camp. Um, I thought the more Sam got comfortable, the more reps he got, the more he started to separate himself. And uh, I think that's been over the last few couple of weeks. Is there anything about the training that's experience that you wish you had done differently? Um, you know, we, I mean, it's. I mean, I, I, I've. I always feel like I let Trey down. I mean, I wanted him to come here. I believe in Trey. I believed in him before we took him, and I'm responsible for that. Um, I didn't want to throw him into the heat of battle right away, but I thought he needed to play. So we tried to figure out every way to do that. I mean, if I can look back in hindsight, he broke that finger on a on a helmet on that fourth preseason game versus the Raiders. I, I wish I didn't put him in a play that had him break his finger because I think that really hurt him in his first year. And not only did it hurt him not getting able to mix in much, but it hurt him in the practice time because he had to adjust how he threw and things like that, which I think set him back for a second year. Um, when we went into the second year, we gave him every chance to do it. We were going to make an offense that, to me, gave him the best chance to be successful at that time, um, which we did do. And when you do that, you hope a guy can stay healthy so he can stay out there long enough. Um, but that didn't last long. It was the first game. and. Um, after that, I mean, I always felt for him, and we continue to work with him. Um, but sometimes things don't, just don't work out. Was there an internal struggle about? I mean, he's still a young guy. He's 23 years old. He still has. He's only halfway through his rookie contract. Did you consider like just keeping him here to just to give him a chance? to eventually be the guy that you thought you were getting when you drafted him? Um, yeah, we do consider that. I just think that was hard for us to do that um, with where we're at as a team, how much time we have given him, um, and the situation here where we gave him every chance to beat out Sam, um, and it just didn't happen. And when you look at it in that case, there's not much opportunities you can do on that practice field. There isn't a, there's not a developmental league. There's not a whole field on the side where we can get our players just to practice to give him reps. Um, you got to get the one ready to go. And when you're not, it's hard enough to get the two ready to go. Um, the three is usually a guy who never gets a rep till he randomly gets out there. And that wasn't what I felt was right for Trey and um, with how much we had done so far. And that wasn't going to be what was right for our team either. I thought it was time to move on for him and for us. And I'm well aware of everything that happened. And yeah, unfortunately, it did happen. But I like where our team's at too right now. And I feel very good about that. And I also feel very good that despite all that, just, you know, you'd love to keep a third guy to develop, especially a guy that you really, really love um, and believe that he could do it someday. But to do that for $7 million um, over two years with places where you are in the cap, when you can't provide those reps and stuff for people um, and you got other things with our team, where we're doing, that to me doesn't make much sense for the Niners. I wish it would because, hell yeah, we'd love to just keep them until eventually it works out. But that clock ran out here, and that's why we had to make a real tough decision, one we didn't enjoy doing, one we didn't want to do. But we try to do what we think's best, and this is what we think's best. How much of this just came down to the fact that where you guys were as a team didn't align with what Trey needed to get where he was trying to go? Um, very much so. I mean, I, I, I do think there was a chance. We thought we were aligned as a team um, to win right away when we did it with them. Um, we knew it would take him time. But we also had to make a decision where we were going to go with our team over a two-year window. And we felt that our, we felt if we could get a rookie quarterback or a guy in a rookie deal who could help us win, man, we could put a good team around him. And we took a shot with Trey because um, we believed he could. We knew it would take some time. But in the meantime, we were going to have a pretty good team. And the time that we did give him when he had his ops, he missed those. And those weren't his fault. I don't, they weren't our fault. They were just those are, that's what happens in football. And when you take a risk on someone who does need to develop and does need some of that time, and then he misses that time, and we are where we're at right now, it is kind of what it is. And I think we are very fortunate that we did find a guy. We still are on 
we still have a rookie quarterback or a guy on a rookie deal that has helped us put together a good team. Uh, we do have a guy that we believe can win with on that deal. And we also feel we have a very strong backup. Um, and that's where we're at. You guys good? Um, I'm sure everyone's everyone's a possibility, but that's stuff we haven't discussed yet. Thanks. All right, well, my question was, last week when he, uh, Trey had that game-winning opportunity, you had him down the ball and kicked the field goal. Do you think that was a missed opportunity? What's that? Last week when Trey was on that last drive and then you had him down the ball and then kicked the field goal instead of him going in for the touchdown, you think that was a missed opportunity? Missed opportunity for what? For, to evaluate what he can do in that situation. No, we evaluate him every day. I, I should have done that for you, but no, but we were good. All right, guys. All right, guys.